All right. So very good. So thank you very much for, uh, and, and appreciate uh, the and, and, and have a great pleasure for presenting you our work on high speed compressible turbo reactions for power generation, hypersonic jet engines, and extending all the way to uh, exploring stars in COVID-19. A uh, little bit of background about me. I'm an associate professor at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. I direct the Propulsion and Energy Research Laboratory. I'm a faculty of Cater, the Center for Advanced Civil Machinery and Energy Research. A uh, little bit of background from where I come from. I was a design engineer at an aerospace company, and then after graduate school, worked as a faculty at Florida State almost a decade ago. Um, uh, I was there for about a couple of years, and then I moved to Pratt & Whitney Military Engines, where uh, it used to be United Technologies Corporation, now it's Raytheon. And I was there for about three and a half years, and then from there moved to become an assistant professor at Old Dominion University, and about uh, five to six years ago moved to UCF. Uh, in terms of uh, accomplishments, uh, so most of uh, our work is uh, having high impact towards national problems related to high speed and hypersonic propulsion and power technologies. Uh, we're leading prime research in detonations for hypersonics for the Air Force, uh, rocket uh, detonation engines for the Air Force Research Lab, and uh, using that technology for clean, uh, high energy uh, power generation, essential electricity. Uh, received various awards uh, from uh, a faculty fellow from Office of Naval Research and uh, Air Force Research Laboratory, uh, the UCF Research for the Stars Award. And uh, um, uh, recently we've got a distinguished uh, paper award at the International Symposium of Combustion. Uh, Dr. Seal could tell you more about how it, it's even challenging to publish there. Um, and then various new investigator type of awards. Uh, we've co-authored 163 scholarly articles with students, uh, 40 journals, and essentially uh, one of them in science paper that appeared last year and it created an entire uh, news throughout the entire world. And I believe it was uh, the only science paper that come out of uh, MAE and I believe from the college as well. Uh, we've had 61 uh, funding awards uh, contributing to a total of 9.2 million to the UCF, and our share is about 6.7 million. Uh, I've graduated uh, nine PhD students, 24 masters, and 11 uh, honors and a major students. Uh, we've, we have a fairly large group, 24 students, the majority of them are PhDs and, and uh, uh, various students, uh, undergraduates that get involved as well. And numerous of them had uh, fellowship awards from NSF, DOD, NASA, McKnight, and, and, and even one from the UCF presidential. Uh, I teach uh, undergraduate and graduate courses related to aerospace engineering, and, and that has been uh, most of my teaching effort there. Services, uh, I've hosted a, two workshops on uh, high-speed turbulent uh, reacting flows at UCF. Uh, I'm a curriculum co-chair for this year's uh, Proceeding uh, Combustion Institute, essentially associate editor, and I was technical discipline chair for AAA pressure gain there, and, and contribute to various reviews and proposals and journals. And uh, I've, had the, uh, I've had the pleasure to be part of the uh, university committee, uh, essentially the CECS task force uh, for COVID-19. Um, we've been working on critical uh, projects related to propulsion energy research, um, having a broad impact for hypersonics, power generation, uh, propulsion, fire safety, and it goes all the way to COVID-19 and supernova science, essentially exploding stars. Uh, for hypersonic and supersonic reactions, we have uh, significant work in the area, both on non-reacting and reacting uh, uh, flows. And we have a lot of work here and it's growing so rapidly, uh, a lot of projects. So there, if there's interest there, talk to me because uh, um, there's, a, there's a lot of interest there. Uh, we work in uh, next generation adaptive variable cycle engines. It's mostly Department of Defense related. Uh, we have a lot of projects there, but I can't talk about it. It's mostly ITAR related projects. Um, uh, my lab is an ITAR lab. Um, we do a lot of high speed uh, turbulent flows, uh, whether it be external aerodynamics related to aircrafts or internal for uh, engines itself, uh, both for military and commercial aviation. Um, and I've actually had the pleasure to work on this specific aircraft as uh, on the engine itself. Um, 
uh, deflagration, detonation, and explosion supernova exploding stars. This was featured in our science paper, and we're leveraging that mechanism for engines to produce higher energy and thrust there. And I'll talk about it in some of the featured research. We're also doing sensors and flow controls for uh, aerodynamics and engines. Uh, most recently, we had a project with uh, Professor Gong and Professor Raghavan uh, with Department of Energy on wireless temperature temp sensing. So we're hoping that is, uh, is going to um, uh, yield to uh, a significant impact in how um, things are, are uh, going to evolve and, and being measured in engines. Uh, we have uh, prime research on rotating detonation engines for rocket propulsion and power generation. And we use ultra-fast advanced laser diagnostics for tomography, i.e. three-dimensional uh, uh, flow field measurements uh, resolved in time. Um, so we use a lot of lasers uh, and, and high-speed diagnostics for these measurements. And that's where we apply physics-based uh, models and, and uh, AI machine learning and statistical analysis. And this could be an area of uh, great collaboration there because we generate uh, terabytes of data ev for every acquisition. So it's, it's a lot of data that we have to mine through. Um, so highlighting some of the key research that we've been doing, uh, we've defined a universal mechanism for uh, controlling terrestrial and astrophysics explosions. Essentially, uh, breaking it down, flames are typically passive. That's what we've been known throughout decades and decades. Um, but what we discovered is you could actually, with turbulence mixing, uh, perturb a flame to the point where it becomes uh, active rather than passive. And what I mean by that is, yes, you, you could expect, for example, a deflagration, a candle-like flame like this. This is a deflagration explosion. <laughs> so from this, you feel like, okay, this is pretty intense, but now you're not really releasing that energy efficiently. Here's what I mean by actually converting a flame to a, a, uh, a detonation. So this gives you an idea of what this blast right there is a detonation. It's a, a most intense energy release. And obviously you saw the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound. So you saw the light first and then you heard the sound afterwards. But this is what we're talking about where you're converting these passive flames to active flames that could propagate at really high speeds. And we've taken this and defined uh, a missing link mechanism for supernova explosions. And we've been using it as featured recently uh, for propulsion related applications. And this is where the impact really comes in that uh, eventually, hopefully, when we get to start to get back to flying again, um, implementing some of these technologies where it could get you from New York to LA or Orlando to LA in 30 minutes. So hopefully faster than Zoom at some point. Um, we also used it in, in recent work with, um, related to what we experienced a couple of months ago in uh, the uh, Beirut, Lebanon explosion, where we created that explosion in, in, a, in a laboratory experiment. And it, we could determine the, the um, key uh, essentially load that was present there during that explosion and the impact of it um, as well. Um, and most of this work has been funded by Air Force um, and Navy and uh, Department of Defense and National Science Foundation. Now we've taken a lot of what we've learned there fundamentally and we've been using it for uh, hypersonic technology. We've been heavily funded there with uh, NRL, uh, AFOSR, DOD, and that activity is growing. We have a unique um, hypersonic reacting facility, Mach 5 to Mach 7. It's the only hypersonic reacting facility in the US currently. Um, we call it Hyper React. Um, and this is at UCF. Many su get surprised that we have this capability, but we're discovering that we can actually hold detonation sustained there for the first time um, in, in decades uh, of exploring this mechanism. So uh, we have a lot of uh, press that is going to come out of this shortly. Uh, recently, uh, we've uh, developed what, what has been known out in the news field as the UCF rocket engine. They call it the UCF rocket engine, but for us, it's a uh, first demonstration of a uh, upper stage 
booster hydrogen oxygen rotating detonation rocket engine. We've been working with the Air Force Research Laboratory on this. And um, the, the key aspect there is it's been publicized before even by prominent professors that this is not possible, including a NASA proposal that I submitted last year. And in the review, it was rejected because they did not believe that this would be possible. And we published this uh, this year, and we showed that it is possible to achieve with the right mixture, uh, the um, uh, right mixing, essentially hydrogen, oxygen, upper stage booster engine. Um, using, again, the uh, rocket science that we're doing there for reducing emissions for power generation, we have a lot of activities there with Aerojet, Rocketdyne, GE, SWERI, Department of Energy related activities. We're producing clean energy and renewable net zero emission energy uh, using fuels like hydrogen, for example. So here, an example, we're reducing NOx emissions. Here, we have a sooting plume like this using essentially the, the, these mechanisms. We could produce clean uh, power generation in that aspect. Um, lastly, the, uh, we had the pleasure of having a NSF rapid uh, funding earlier this year with uh, Dr. Michael Kinzel at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. And you'll be questioning is like, what does your research has anything to do with COVID-19? And it actually is highly related uh, since the, um, uh, we uh, deal with spray atomization in engines. And when you think of your respiratory uh, function there as in sneeze, cough, speaking, it's a propulsive device that interacts with your saliva and mucus in your mouth and your nose. And we, we've been characterizing this in primary and, and secondary breakup mechanisms for jet and crossflows fuel injection in engines. And it stemmed from a, uh, a thesis defense that happened in the spring where uh, a student was looking at biofuels where we could alter the viscosity density of the fluid dynamic itself. And by doing that, you could change the atomization process there. Um, and uh, uh, this is an example of that process where you have a person that is sneezing with traditional saliva and you could see the aerosols and droplets there uh, that are propagating and that transmits to the next person and that's when you get infected. Um, by altering the fluid saliva, making it thicker, denser, higher viscosity, higher surface tension, we could produce larger droplets that fall down rather than transmit to the next person to breathe in. And this compares it to a face mask. We've been advancing on that front to the point where uh, we've controlled the fluid dynamics to the point where you have regular saliva, a mask, a thickening agent, and then a binding agent to the point where you're not producing any aerosols or, or, um, or, or uh, droplets at all. And, th and it's using essentially off the shelf ingredients that you don't need an FDA approval for. And this is some of the, it's like candy, um, chocolate or, or uh, peanut like um, that you can have in your mouth where these are confections that are um, developed by the students. And, and we've advanced it from there. And we've worked with uh, Raju from the Tech Transfer Office on having, we already have a provisional patent and we're moving forward with producing this shortly. In terms of collaboration needs uh, in the near term, um, it's the first one is supposed to be humorous. There's 168 hours a day or a week and um, it's very little hours. So I wanted to throw it out there. Is anybody working on time warp or time machine or a cloning device? Please let me know. I'm pretty sure you're probably a, a trillionaire by now. Um, but anyway, so we're, uh, ex uh, I would like to expand industry collaboration from energy to airspace. The state of Florida is very rich in that area. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, there's only 168 hours a week. So touching base with all industry in Florida is challenging. Um, collaborations on hypersonics and high-speed flows. We're relating prime research there. The, we're running the only reacting facilities available uh, in the nation there. And the only um, uh, comparable or comparable reacting work that is being done in hypersonics is only at UVA and UIUC and of course, University of Central Florida. So that tells you the scale uh, of our contribution there. Uh, we're looking at clean energy such as hydrogen for power generation where your your net output is essentially uh, water 
water vapor and net zero carbon biofuels. High temperature materials, I'm working with Dr. Radovan, but please uh, reach out to me about those. We work in a high temperature environment. Uh, Dr. Song, we've, we gotta get something going. We've been talking, but we haven't got something going there in advanced manufacturing and 3D printing. Uh, applications of laser, laser diagnostics. I think this is an area where we, we definitely have a need for. Uh, we have lasers to be just dangerous enough to use them, but uh, there are experts in there that could use this. Image processing analysis, a lot of our data measurement are image-based. Um, and then we get a lot of, uh, we would like to have collaborations in data science and AI and machine learning since we generate a lot of data there. Um, Long-term uh, contributions is Cater 2.0, I believe in Cater, large center initiatives. Uh, I have a vision of producing a, um, uh, a technical focus in terms of research and education of hypersonics and space, and then eventually leading to biofuels and cardiovascular flows down the road with uh, bio-inspired propulsion. Acknowledgements to UCF and, and everybody at UCF for the accomplishments that we received uh, so far and collaborators. And of course, everything is being done by the students um, and, and obviously the sponsors as part of this. And I just wanted to highlight one more thing. The alumni from my group, I believe, you know, UCF is the one, no, number one suppliers of airspace uh, and defense engineers. Um, most of my graduates are in that field. So I, I'm, I'm happy that, that um, we're, we're contributing to that, that, uh, that area. With that, I would like to take questions.